just like the title says. Watch this video before scaling up your 4K footage in an HD timeline. We'll take a look at using 4K footage in HD timelines to zoom in on your image, reframe your shot, or even use the Ken Burns effect without losing any video resolution. So before you drop your 4K clip in an HD timeline and scale it up to 200%, watch this video first. Hey guys, what's up? This is Serge and welcome back to my channel. A few weeks ago, Larry Jordan released a video that talks about this subject. This was something I didn't know about, so I found this video very interesting. Here's Larry's theory. When you use 4K video in HD timelines, your original video files have way more resolution than you need for an HD project. The 4K video files are 3840 pixels wide by 2160 pixels tall. An HD video is 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels tall. This allows you to zoom in on your video up to 200% while still retaining the necessary resolution for an HD project. This can be used to scale your image, reframe your shot, or even simulate camera moves. There's a couple different ways this can be achieved and this is the part that I found interesting. So let's take a look. I'll create a new project and set the video resolution to 1080p. So the image in my project will be 920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels tall. Now in my browser I have a 4K video clip. If I add it to my timeline, Final Cut Pro automatically scales my image to fit my frame. But since I have all the extra resolution in my original video, I can scale my image up to 200% without losing any resolution. So the way I've always done it is by using the transform tool. I can use a scale slider in the inspector to zoom in on my video and use the transform controls in the viewer to reframe my shot. And as long as I don't go over 200%, I'll still have enough pixels in the original video to keep the HD resolution without losing any image quality. Or so I thought. What I learned from Larry is when you add a 4K video clip into an HD timeline, Final Cut Pro renders your video as an HD clip. So instead of your clip being 3480 pixels wide by 2160 pixels tall, it's only 1920 by 1080 pixels. When you scale your image up with a transform tool, you're basically stretching your pixels, which will result in decreased image quality. Another way of doing this, and this is a method Larry Jordan suggests, is by using the spatial conform tool. This way, you don't lose any video resolution. Let's try it this way. I'll add the same clip to my timeline, and in the video inspector, from the spatial conform drop-down menu, select none. Now, instead of adjusting the image size to fit my frame, Final Cut Pro leaves it at its original size and only displays part of the image that fits in my frame. The final image is the same size as my first clip that's been scaled up 200%. Except this time, the clip in my timeline, instead of having pixels stretched at 200%, still has the same size pixels which should look better and sharper. Makes sense, right? I can now use the transform tool to reframe my clip or even use a scale slider to reduce the size to frame it exactly the way I want, without losing any resolution. I'll reset the transform parameter in my second clip so we can compare the two clips and see if we can tell the difference. I'll compare the same frame from my first clip, which has been scaled up 200%, to the same frame from my second clip. Theoretically, the frame from my second clip should look better. I don't know about you, but even when zoomed in to 600%, I still can't tell the difference. And for another comparison, I exported the same video as an HD master file, 1920 by 1080 pixels, to compare it to the first two clips. Just like my first clip, I scaled it up to 200% for the same image size. The last clip looks considerably softer, but my first two clips look very similar. So was Larry Jordan wrong? Well, not necessarily. Like Larry says, anytime you scale an image to over 100%, you run the risk of creating video artifacts when rendering your video. 
So even though I can't tell the difference by looking at it, going forward, I'll be using Larry's method just to make sure I retain the maximum image quality. If you want to watch Larry's video, I'll link it in the video description below. Watch it and try both these methods in your project just to see if you can tell the difference. Let me know what you find in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and come back next week for another Final Cut Pro tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week.